Today, I was planning on talking about endocrine disruptors. Uh, endocrine disruptors are chemicals that are similar to specific hormones um, that they actually bind to the hormones receptor sites. Your body sees these as chemicals um, or sees these chemicals as hormones, which they are not. Uh, they can increase the production of some hormones such as BPA. Um, um, BPA we find in plastics, um, it kind of mimics estrogen, it can build up in breast tissue and cause breast cancer. Sometimes they decrease the production of hormones such as dioxin, which decreases testosterone and can link to infertility. Sometimes they turn into other hormones, sometimes they interfere with hormone signaling, sometimes they tell cells to die earlier than they should, um, but basically the majority of them accumulate in organs. Um, it's estimated that 800 to 1,000 endocrine disrupting chemicals are on the market today. Because there are so much, um, and it's going to be impossible for me to list. So I'm kind of going to just focus on the worst of them and the ones most commonly seen. BPA, like I said, is found in plastic and it imitates estrogen. It's tightly linked to breast cancer and reproductive issues, um, obesity, uh, early puberty, heart disease, that type of stuff. It's almost impossible to avoid. Um, it helps to go fresh, not canned. BPA tends to line the inside of a can. Uh, the key thing to avoid receipts, say no thank you, um, but the key thing is to look uh, for the number seven on your recycling. That will give you a good indication that there's BPA. Dioxin is part of industrial processing. Um, it affects fertility, especially in men. It builds up in the body, but it also builds up in our food and, and can act as a carcinogen later in life. It's almost impossible to avoid you're going to find it in our contaminated foods, such as meat, fish, milk, eggs, butter. Um, consider going vegan. Um, I, I've tried it. It's not easy, but I would definitely try to limit your meat and um, animal product intake. Uh, we've talked a lot before in our lectures about, um, you know, really trying to stick to a Mediterranean diet where we're using olive oil instead of butter, you know, more fish, less red meat or sparingly, that type of stuff. Your phthalates are um, chemicals that cause cells to die prematurely. All cells have, um, all cells die. We want our cells to turn over, but these cause the cells to die prematurely, which can lead to reproductive issues, obesity, diabetes, thyroid issues. Um, and I don't know if you can and tell, but there's a pattern here, right? A lot of these endocrine disruptors lead to obesity, diabetes, thyroid issues. Um, phthalates are found a lot in plastic food containers, plastic wrap, that type of stuff. Look for the recycling label number three. You're going to see a lot of beauty products. If a beauty product says fragrance, um, that's usually code for phthalates. Uh, in your drinking water, we have a lot of contaminants in our drinking water. Atrazine, arsenic, um, lead, uh, percolate, which is rocket fuel. Uh, that one greatly affects our thyroid. Uh, using iodized salt helps. Um, counter that effects. Uh, but most importantly, consider filtering your water, maybe not only your drinking water, but the water that you use to take a bath or a shower. Uh, your CAFO meats, poultries, and dairies. This means CAF CAFO means concentrate animal feeding operations. So those farms where animals are kind of packed together um, and living in kind of unsanitary conditions, we have to give them a lot of antibiotics because they get sick. Um, we also feed them a lot of hormones so that they get all big, nice, and juicy, and plump. Um, so to avoid those, consider eating um, free range, organic, maybe buy from small local farms, that type of stuff. Mercury from fish. That's a tough one for me. I think fish is really important. There's a lot of essential fatty acids in fish. Um, farm raised is not very good. Um, sardines, anchovies, herring, these all have low contaminants but are still high in omegas. You might want to consider eating more of those. Um, we're talking a lot about um, the toxins in our environments and our food. And for me personally, and I don't know how you're feeling, I get annoyed and frustrated. Like, how do I eat? How do I clean my house? What do I, you know, put on my hair and my face, that type of stuff. Even if you did everything perfectly, you're still going to be exposed. Um, so trying to kind of just look at your main sources of exposure, um, don't eat out of plastic food containers and beverage containers, eat more fresh foods, store your foods in glass, 
don't eat out of a can, um, body care and cosmetic products, read your labels, eat organic, uh, avoid highly processed foods. We all know from my previous lectures um, that uh, processed foods you know, are gonna have a lot of added salt, sugar, and fats that our body doesn't know how to process. So just avoid, you know, try not to eat most of your food from a box and possibly filter your water. Because these endocrine disruptors are linked to diabetes and obesity, they are called obesogens. And I think it's important to consider liver support as part of a weight loss program. Fiber um, is essentially not only for feeding our gut bacteria, but helping balance our blood sugar, helping with satiation, um, but they also help to eliminate these toxins. So natural sources of fiber also give you um, minerals and vitamins, um, you know, those natural sources is what we see in vegetables and fruit. So try adding more of those, maybe consider a fiber supplement. I thought about this lecture because last week I just had a rash of patients coming in for weight gain. I do think there's something to this COVID weight gain. I keep calling it the COVID-15, um, but they all have similar stories. It's a slow creep of weight. Um, it's always around the midsection. How many women get this when they hit 40, you know, between the 40 and 50 age range is staggering. You know, they're watching their diet, they're exercising, um, but this little like bulge in their stomach won't go away. Uh, you know, I'll test their thyroid, maybe their thyroid is normal. Um, they're... I, I know that their hormones are going to be part of this culprit, um, you know, the changes in hormone, perimenopause, menopause, et cetera. But I also know that these xenoestrogens, these endocrine disruptors might be part of the picture as well. So sometimes the first part of a weight loss program means liver support. Um, your liver is the, mass, the major organ of a detoxification. So supporting your liver can help eliminate these endocrine disruptors. I get nervous recommending um, certain liver support just because it can interfere with medications and that type of stuff. So I definitely think if you're interested in liver support, you know, speaking with a naturopath or, you know, someone who's um, uh, informed about this type of stuff, you know, a lot of your amino acids do help, uh, glycine, taurine, and acetylcysteine, that type of stuff. Uh, but definitely consult with someone first. Uh, and then testing. There is testing that you can do. You can test for heavy metals. You can also test for some of these chemicals in your blood, hair, urine. Blood and urine are generally um, considered best. Um, I do think testing is important, but it's kind of a hard question for me. Whatever kind of comes up, what if you like these, we see these chemicals or these um, heavy metals in your blood or urine, you know, we are going to want to detoxify them out, but you're going to kind of detoxify them out the same way. There's not like, there's generally not one specific thing for each type of chemical and hard um, heavy metal. But I also think it's kind of important to know so that we know what your other, what your risk factors are based on those results. Um, and I also think that I learned a lot. Uh, I uh, tested my heavy metals and my minerals uh, just out of curiosity. And I was surprised to find that I had high mercury levels and low calcium levels. So it was surprising for me because um, I eat cheese and that type of stuff, like it's going out of style. And um, I, you know, would at the time was probably doing sushi three times a week. Uh, some of it was good quality, some of it probably not such good quality. Um, and that was probably where my mercury levels came from. So I didn't really have any symptoms. I just tested out of curiosity. And so to see those results was really revealing. Um, so I do think testing has its place, um, but definitely taking care of our liver and um, you can always find someone to help you detoxify these chemicals and heavy metals out of your system. But the first thing you can do is limit, um, minimize or eliminate your exposure. Again, I see tons of emails popping up about people trying to get in. I am so sorry that I messed this up. Uh, please forgive me. I hope you guys find it on the Mac website or on my website, drlindsaysnelson.com. I will hopefully see you guys next week and I will take extra care not to mess that up. I'm gonna be talking about cardiovascular disease in women next week. Um, and if you have any questions, please email me, drlindsayesnelson at gmail.com. And I think that's it. Thank you, everybody. Sorry.